Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and it's quite a late night tonight, and usually when I'm up this late it's because I have a lot of anxiety, and I'm on a part of YouTube that honestly freaks me out a little bit. But it's part of YouTube that's small, tiny, and one that I love. And the reason I'm on this side of YouTube is because, honestly, when, I, when I'm looking through the news and I see World War III effectively trending, and the world in the state that it is now, it freaks me out, ladies and gentlemen. You know, when you're looking at the entire news and doom scrolling and realizing that, oh my god, everyone's talking about facing World War III, and it, we're trying to ignore it. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, I live in a part of the world, I live in an understanding that at some point, everything can come to an end. Now, I make videos like this, I don't know if it's like a coping mechanism, or usually it's because, ladies and gentlemen, I've come to the realization the older I get that the world can come to an end. But I like to believe in the good of humanity. I like to think that at the very worst times, we all can somehow come together and move on to the next day. Now look, the world can end, okay? The world could literally end in the next five minutes, all right? Boom, Fallout style. But you know what? I've realized that as long as you spend your days smiling, having a good time, living every day like it's basically the last, and you come to realize that at some point the whole ride stops, but you gotta enjoy the time you're on the tracks, I guess you could say. That's pretty much the best thing, the, the best mentality, or the most sane mentality that you can have. Now, if you ever have looked up channels on YouTube, you probably realize that there is a lot of channels that, at least, or not a lot of channels anymore, but there's a fair amount of people that make emergency alert scenarios. And this is stuff that I find to be genuinely scary. Anxiety driving. Now you probably heard the term analog horror and you probably have visited a lot of horror channels that have covered analog horror stories, right? But this is like true analog horror in my opinion. This is basically recreations of what are actual emergency alert scenarios. Now, what is an emergency alert uh, situation? Well, again, it's basically a system that every country, by the way, has, where uh, when something really messed up happens, like a natural disaster, like nuclear weapons being struck towards us, or at least arriving, then uh, it's one of those things that basically plays on television, uh, the radio, internet, Amber Alerts get sent out to phones, basically letting you know that things are about to happen, okay? Here's what you can do. Now, of course, throughout history, there have been actual real-life emergency alert scenarios. And before we continue, I just want to state for the record that I'm not going to be playing any specific tones, because at least as far as the United States goes, uh, it is actually illegal to play or rebroadcast those tones. And it's not necessarily something for YouTube as well, but to give you an idea, according to the United States, the EAS is a national public warning system through which broadcasters, cable television providers, wireless cable providers, wireline video providers, uh, uh, supply communications capability to the president to address the American public during a national emergency, okay? Federal, state, local authorities may use the EAS to deliver important emergency information such as weather info, Amber Alerts, and they take it incredibly seriously. The reason why the FCC and the US government doesn't want you rebroadcasting this shit is because it can trigger a chain reaction if you're in like a television studio or a place where they have alert systems like this ready to go. So this is one of these Sage Digital Index systems, which again, if you have an emergency alert going on, if it hears the tones, you know, if you ever hear like an emergency alert broadcast where they sound really loud in your ears, it's because they're transmitting data. And if that data gets daisy chained into this system and other broadcasting studios are hearing it, it starts a daisy chain of emergency alerting. And the government don't want a fake emergency alert system going out, okay? People get really scared. Back in the day, there was a fake emergency alert sent out, a mistake one in Hawaii where people thought, oh shit, ballistic missiles are coming to us. Imagine waking up and seeing the ballistic missiles uh, threat coming towards you in Hawaii. Bro, you think the end of the world is coming at you and then you find out you're being trolled? It was just a fake seize? Get out of here. So anyways, a lot of countries in the world have it. For instance, this is Aramco Channel 3 in Saudi Arabia when they talk about like a scud alert. And it's, it, it'll take you back to the past. It literally is analog horror. Watch this. <laughs> Now, 
او الاستماع للراديو على محطة اف ام Yeah, imagine like having to hear that. You're just watching your television show and then boom, it comes up. And this is basically a Scud missile alert system, okay? That kicked up somewhere around the Gulf War back in 91. And of course, this is a eight minute long broadcast. So you gotta be sort of sitting there watching this until you hear the all clear alert being sent out. And then of course, this isn't the only country that has an EAS system. There's other places, every country has it. So back in 2016, this is an EAS broadcast regarding one of the natural disasters in Japan. Watch this one. Again, it's not all related to like the end of the world nuclear scenario. It's sometimes designed entirely in countries where earthquakes and natural disasters are a real thing. And it gets real scary. Watch this. Bro, I swear to God, dude, I hear that and I'm scared out of my mind, bro. The thing is with these emergency alert scenarios, the anxiety goes through the roof. And obviously, as you're watching this kind of stuff, the narrators, because obviously they have to be like upfront and real about it, right? Like they gotta they gotta tell you something bad is happening. It's not like they're underselling it or overhyping it. They're just literally relaying a pretty serious scary situation. And again, it all just compounds to my anxiety. This is the wartime broadcasting service. This country has been attacked with nuclear weapons. Communications have been severely disrupted, and the number of casualties and the extent of the damage are not yet known. We shall bring you further information as soon as possible. Meanwhile, how is that more how is that more calmly delivered than the tsunami warning? Jesus Christ. Now, thankfully, that was a UK emergency alert scenario that apparently was never ever broadcasted, okay? Thank God for that, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ. Lorsque vous entendrez cette sirène et que vous verrez ce message, cela signifiera que le ministère de la Justice a lancé le dispositif d'urgence pour retrouver un enfant enlevé. Alerte enlèvement. Une description de l'enfant enlevé, sa photo, la date, l'heure et le lieu. Dude, why are French Amber Alert warnings so goddamn scary? Like, they're, they're like so intense. It's like watching an episode of 24, Jesus Christ. Now, of course, some of these are obviously tests. Thank Lord for that. Uh, nobody wants an actual, you know, wartime message being sent out. That would be goddamn scary. And now, of course, while those are real, actual EAS scenarios, there's obviously channels that are designed to make fake versions out there. Now, of course, some of these channels, obviously, the last time we covered it, I want to say around a year and a half ago, were kind of, uh, like, there was a fair amount of channels out there, and, of course, ever since I covered them, there's been a whole lot of, I guess you could say, EAS scenario channel drama, but also some of these channels have sort of been gone or sort of thrown out by YouTube's algorithms just because of the possibility of it being detected or to reuse content, which I think is unfair. You know, at the end of the day, these channels create some pretty compelling analog horror type scenarios, stuff that you can put in the back and just listen to. If you ever just want to like, you know, if you, if you ever just want to like watch some really scary stuff that really peaks the hairs on the back of your neck, you know, again, and some of these scenarios are obviously super duper fake ones like the Skynet scenario for instance where they just input obviously in amongst actual like you know videos uh, kind of simulating a real TV broadcast and they throw up the emergency alert scenario the strategic air command has issued a national emergency you know that artificial intelligence Skynet yeah we're fucked boys it's taken over and of course for various other channels there's obviously like alert world there's harvester k4 EAS and of course there's a whole bunch of channels that have like a few thousand thousand subscribers or anything and of course uh you saw some of the drama that i was talking about too was literally one of my favorite actual like eas channels even a year ago around the time when i covered it shortly after was exposing predators apparently in this community or at least adjacent to it which is insane to think all right kind of wild but one of my all-time favorite scenarios too two years ago by harvester right here has some of the most like chilling stuff that i've seen in terms of like eas scenarios like watch some of this it's a full 29 minute video, but I'm gonna show you like a little snippet of it that just always gets me when I play this in the middle of the night, like at two in the morning. Your exchanges are occurring between the US, China, and Korea. Message dated 19th of the 5th, 21. With nuclear exchanges continuing between the three parties, normal life has now collapsed in all three nations. 
Estimates for the death toll puts the total at 22.9 million in the United States, 79.2 million for China and 900,000 for North Korea. Our military has used computer models to determine that the U.S. death toll could reach 75 million by early July. To prevent this... You know, you sort of put yourself into a situation where, like, sometimes you gotta, like, pretend that you're in, like, a bunker when the apocalypse happens. And, like, this is the last few things you get to hear. Like, the little or literal last messages from, like, the remnants of governments. You know, after, like, a nuclear attack happens and, like, the World War Three scenario when shit hits the fan, you both, we all know that, like, the governments that we hold near and dear to us today, they're all going to collapse and be gone, okay? At that moment, there is no U.S. anymore. Regardless of whatever continuity of government stuff that they've got set going forward when there's no world anymore there's not going to be any country anytime after it's going to be the slow collapse of human society and that's one of the things that i get really anxious about when it comes to looking up at war because i think about like what world war three is and it's not going to be like any other war you know now that we've got real world ending things it's going to be the one war where in a matter of hours in a matter of days weeks even if we're lucky all of human history, thousands, tens of thousands of years, immediately gets to an end. Our entire species goes extinct, you know, if this scenario ever occurs. Which is why I'm always, like, hopeful that the governments of the world and the parties that run us eventually try to mitigate as much of this as they can. It might appear that the world is in a bad spot, but hopefully we never really reach that tipping point where the spillover occurs and we're all gone. Strikes will reach the city within the next few minutes. Nuclear strikes create a large explosion that will destroy everything in its path. If you are caught in this blast, you will be vaporized. It also creates intense light. You will be temporarily or permanently blinded if you look at this light. It creates a shockwave blast, which will shatter windows within miles of the blast site. Fallout is the final and most deadly component of nuclear strikes. Fallout will spread for hundreds of miles. You know, I can't believe they got the Stephen Hawking voice for this, but you imagine when you hear that and, like, when you see the quality of this EAS towards the tail end of a, of a, of a wartime scenario, you know, shit's really just hit the fan. So, obviously, this is something that always interests me as well when I think about, like, the world of nuclear weapons and attacks as well, too. And, of course, if you want to actually read up on, like, how to prepare for, like, a possible nuclear detonation, FEMA actually has a complete, like... 258 page guide that basically walks you through effectively what should happen and what the government will do in the event that something drastic like this actually occurs. Now, of course, a shorthand explanation is the government actually has like a ready gov thing, which like if the worst ever occurs, right? The worst situation, they tell you, you got a bright flash that causes temporary blindness for less than a minute. Because, yes, they are that bright, okay? Bombs are huge. You've got a blast wave that can literally damage structures several miles out, by the way. Radiation, fire and heat, an electromagnetic pulse. And then, of course, fallout, okay? Which is literally spreading sickness. So, again, it's one of those situations. It's a really horrific situation, which if you don't die... You know, it, it, like in this, it, like if you're not underneath and you're not part of like the first few people that are vaporized, most people, unfortunately, are going to succumb to a really painful death from like radiation down the road. OK, and again, what the government tells you is like, get inside to the nearest building. OK, brick concrete are the best. Remove your contaminated clothing and wipe and wash your unprotected skin. Go to the basement, stay away from the roof, and then of course you gotta stay in for 24 hours, unless local authorities provide other instructions. Families should stay where they are inside, reunite later, and then keep your pets inside too. And of course, uh, you know, you've also got stay tuned, listen to some of those emergency alert scenarios. And of course, if you got battery operated radios, go for it. Cell phone, text messaging, internet, yeah, they're definitely most likely going to be unavailable. Now, one of the interesting things from Princeton edu or from Princeton University here is they actually made a video called Plan A, where they kind of showcase a actual simulation of what a nuclear attack or like the end of the world, like, you know, DEFCON situation looks like. So again, if you play this right over here, you can see that literally the US launches their payload from here. And of course you've got submarines sending out their payloads as well too. And you gotta remember some of these missiles are like MIRV. So like they split into like eight different missiles and cover like a massive area. And of course you've got the Chinese, the Russians launching their stuff. 
And if you ever notice something, it's all happening way above this equator. This actual thing fails to also, uh, I, I believe, capture like Pakistan, India, and other like nuclear armed countries. But again, the idea is generally if you live in South America, Africa, and again, Australia, you should relatively be fine. Or if you're like one of the six people that live in like Siberia, you should be good. But it's one of those situations where even their estimation here is the casualty in 45 minutes reaches up to 85.3 million people. And it's a harrowing reminder of like what the world can look like after two hours of like us finally losing our shit against each other, right? And it's why some countries in the world, Japan and Canada, from what I understand, have a new no nuclear policy, right? Even though these are two countries that can build an arsenal in a record amount of time if they needed to. But because of the horrors that have been inflicted in the past by bombs that were literally a fraction of what we have these days, yeah, this is something that some countries definitely don't want to be a part of. And it's kind of freaky to think about it, right? Because it's a situation where the, the timeline of this is super wild. If in the event that like the bombs get fired, let's say that the United States would not be the aggressor. They're the ones being hit at. It's literally a situation where, from my understanding, you literally wake the president up in the middle of the night and they have like maybe a couple minutes to like get their bearings together and basically retaliate. And it's a weird question to ask somebody, right? Because you're one person and somebody has to ask you, hey, do you wanna end human history in the world today? And you basically have to say yes. If you don't say yes, your country gets flattened, all right? So you basically respond yes. You go to a bunker and all of human history is done right there. It's one of the most morally fucked things if you think about it, right? And sometimes I wonder if like presidents or like any world leader truly understands the the gravity of that situation if they were ever forced into it. But yeah, it's a wild situation to think. And again, going back to the EAS scenario, it gets even more darker. This 城市已经崩溃，您将找不到任何用处. That is like some of the scariest stuff that you can read, and it's one of the weird. It's one of the coolest parts about these EA scenario storytellings. They usually start out with like high quality footage, and towards the end, when like the world is done, they switch to like 480p, 144p, like analog broadcasting, because obviously, as the world is crumbling and deteriorating, the ability to broadcast high quality footage goes away. And I think what's scary is like, when you read the words, the government has like dissolved and hey, listen, we wish you the best of luck. It's all pretty much over at this point. Nothing is more like pessimistic and scary when you really think about that. And it makes you a little bit more thankful to wake up in a world where it's not like this yet, okay? And I, and honestly, in reality, I really don't think we'll get to that point. It's one of those things where when you doom scroll enough, you kind of end up believing some of the stuff for, for a minute until eventually, you know, you kind of you kind of have to pinch yourself and realize that no country ever really wants the world to end. It's, no, it's in no one's actual benefit or interest. And you hope that because of that belief, nobody's ever going to flip the screw, nobody's ever going to flip that switch and end it all. Even if we do get close to the edge, right? Intentions. And again, when it comes to other emergency alert scenario channels, when it's not about the end of the world or natural disasters, it's literally sometimes about like actual cringe shit, I would say, like the Sega final channel broadcast, which is obviously the quality on these things are pretty well done. It's just whenever you start involving SCPs and shit like that, you tend to lose me for a little bit. You find some fun stuff like the United States annexation of Canada, because to be fair with you, Canada is basically what, like the 52nd, 53rd state of the U.S anyways, so you guys taking us over isn't necessarily going to be the most shocking scenario if shit truly hits the fan. Oh man, they made a whole game about this? This game uses the numpad? Use the period for the pound key? No way, dude. If you don't have a numpad, use the number key on top. All right, whatever. Let's start this one off. I gotta tell the president that we don't want the world to end? Jesus. You are the chairman of the USSR due to a technical failure. A 50-ton megaton nuclear warhead is on its way to New York City? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Thanks to breakthroughs in Soviet aviation, your military advisor estimates a delivery. In 10 minutes? 
Yeah, that's how long it takes to get there. Jesus Christ. I got 10 minutes to prevent this? All right, what is this? Your last hope at preventing Armageddon is to get the U.S. Army to intercept the plane. All right, shit, we got to call the president? All right, cool. Uh, Hi. You have reached the United States Washington Moscow hotline. Thank you for your call. Are you calling about an urgent matter? And oh would yeah, you like a yeah, of course I am. President? Press yes. One. one. In order for us to connect you to the president, we will need a verification code. Oh Jesus Christ. Please enter your six digit identification code and close with pound. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, pound. That was not the right code or you may not have the clearance to contact the president. Please, enter your Washington Moscow hotline verification code again and close with pound. Uh. That was not the right code. Would you like to try again? Press 1. In order for us to connect you to the president, we will need a verification code. Please enter your six-digit identification code. You gotta have an account. option that says zero. I don't know what the code is. A nuke is about to hit. If your matter is less urgent and you would like to speak to a representative, press two. Just speak to a representative. We got eight minutes before the world we ends. We value your call. A representative will speak with you shortly. Oh no, you not this shit shortly. 14th in line. Oh Jesus. Expected wait time is 34 minutes. Yeah, we're fucked. Yeah, we're screwed. Our wait times are unusually high right now. It might be best to try again at another time. Would you like to continue waiting? Press 1. If you would like to go back to the main menu, press 2. Now obviously, ladies and gentlemen, the world ends if we have to rely on a hotline system like that. Which is why, thankfully, there are entire systems in place, radar systems, that can detect this stuff pretty much a minute after it's out. But to understand, the world of nuclear attacks are so scary that the moment you, the government even alerts us through these EAS systems, it's already the end game, ladies and gentlemen. They're already in the bunkers. The 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 world leaders are already on 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 the on the plane to Mars. If you the 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 ship to Mars. At that moment, we're all screwed, ladies and gentlemen, so you better start collecting the bottle caps, and you better start getting ready to defend yourselves. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the wild world of YouTube that gives me anxiety, and the only reason I end up on it is because of doom scrolling. And that's pretty much what it comes down to. But I guess the real positive of this video and the real thing about it too is regardless of all the anxiety and all the doom scrolling, I really do believe humanity has a very, very, very amazing ability in the wildest of times to eventually one day come together. It's one of the reasons why I think like ever since, if you really ask your parents about this or like your grandparents, they probably told you that, listen, We've sat in the in in the in the nuclear like scary DEFCON age for decades at this point. Okay, tensions were unbelievably, from my in my opinion, a lot higher even back during the Cuban Missile Crisis, back during the '60s and the '70s, hell, even the '80s. So if we manage to survive then, I'm pretty sure we have a pretty good chance of surviving now. And I like to believe that at the end of the day. Most of the world understands that when it's all over, nobody wins, all right? And that's one of the reasons why I think everyone just kind of puffs their chest out and touts themselves, but I don't think anybody is willing to go through with it because nobody wants to be known as the person that ends humanity. Nobody wants that on their actual conscience. At least that's what I hope. But again, at the end of the day, if the world does end, then it ends. And if it doesn't, then I'll be here and I hope you'll be here and we can enjoy every day laughing at something stupid, talking about cool stuff like this, and just generally having a fun time. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and I'm going to make my own <clears throat> DNS server.